Hello. Hi. You're uh, currently on tour with uh, Entombed. How has that been so far? Really cool. Really cool. Um, like Entombed are really nice guys. The only, of course, really sad thing thing was what happened with Mike and, and mm -hmm. Lulio and, and uh, that Ivan had to drop off, of course. But um, you know, it's um, yeah, it's a really sad, sad and tragic event, of course, especially for Mike and his family and, and for Ivan. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's, it's uh, that was kind of rough, but otherwise it's it's been it's been good. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm on a mask probably plays more live shows than any other band. I mean, <laughs> how do you keep? How do you stay enthusiastic about every show? I don't think we play more than any other band, but we've had a lot, we had a had a pretty rough schedule this this year. But I mean, it, it's easy to to keep enthusiastic uh, uh, when you go to like. When you come out on stage and you see the fans in the room, and, and like every show this year has been really great, actually. Even you know supporting Slayer, uh, which can be rough, was fantastic. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was. Um, it's it's been uh, it's been a good year for us. Mm -hmm. uh, do you bring any entertainment on tour? I mean, do you have any any moments where you just wish you were back home again? <laughs> well, it happens. You know, you, you get tired, of course, but. Like uh, you, you try to do stuff, you know, go out about town or watch movies or whatever, just to kill time, of course. But um, it's uh, it's a part of the job, you know. It's like um, the traveling bit. Um, I guess it could could do without, but uh, <laughs> but the shows are a lot of fun. So. Um. Right then, is it right that uh, bands actually make uh, most of their money from touring these days? I think so. Uh, I, I don't think that a lot of bands make a lot of money uh, from from uh, selling CDs. Um, it's it's a tricky tricky thing actually because to touring is so important uh, financially. I know it is for us, um, uh, but without album sales, you can't go on tour. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, it's it's hard for I mean we we're in a position where we're actually selling CDs and selling more CDs with every release but a lot of bands they never get to that stage and uh, it's it's tough because less people buy CDs that means you can't go on the road. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is your opinion on uh, illegal downloading and concerning the some people find bands that way and so live shows you, you sell more tickets that way. I mean technically. I, I, I don't do it myself, and I, I, I think a lot, of, a lot of people. I think that people don't realize that it's hurting their favorite bands and it's hurting uh, their like uh, more than the industry itself. I mean, a lot of a lot of people seem to think that the minute you sign a record deal, you're a millionaire, but that's not the, the case. Uh, record companies more or less a bank it loans you the money mm -hmm. to be able to put out CDs and possibly go on tour but if you don't sell CDs you're not going to be able to tour so it's like a, it's the bands that get hurt it's it's not the, the record companies they will make their money anyways mm -hmm. okay now i assume that everyone in the band is uh, you know interested in mythology and viking history and and things like this do you have any favorite kinds of uh, sources of information books or websites where i actually find out about these kinds of things i mean there's there's a lot of interesting books like and about the scandinavian mythology you can find you can find it almost any, anywhere but you know, there's there's some uh, Icelandic sagas, especially that I like, and one is the the Njala, uh, which is really cool, and then Egil Skallagrimsson saga. Those are two of my favorites. But there's also like um, uh, the Edda, which is like the the mythology in, in poetic form, and it's a really good source of inspiration. So yeah, there's there's a lot of books out there that you can find, but you know, <laughs> I can't count them all. <laughs> Okay, can you talk me through uh, how you go from having nothing to having an album? How how do you make an album from the first ideas to it being on the shelves? I mean, it usually, like, the way we write music is that uh, Olavi and, and Joan, they, they write most of us, they come up with ideas at home and they bring their ideas, ideas to, the, to the rehearsal room and then we 
try to work it out. And uh, I write lyrics either from hearing what they have or I have ideas that I put to the music that they have. So, um, And then we rehearse the stuff. We go into the studio, we send the demos to our producer and he has his say about certain things, of course, like uh, which works and what doesn't work. And like, um, and then we basically go, in, go into the studio and record it. I mean, usually we record one instrument at a time, so first drums and, and then uh, guitars and bass and last vocals. Uh, and uh, last of all, it's the lead guitars and stuff like that. It's um, it's not really a big deal. <laughs> and, then, and then you mix it, and then you mm -hmm. send everything to the label, and they care, take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, two years ago when I was speaking to uh, Ollie, he said that um, Odin on Our Side was probably the best album that the band had put out. Yeah. Has, has this changed with the new album? I, th I still think that with Odin on Our Side is, is a great, really great album with some really great songs on it. Uh, I think that this new album is a step further. Actually, it's 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 a little bit better. Actually, I think it's a bit more diverse and, and uh, um, feels like the song structures and everything are a bit better on this one. But you know, it's it might just be that it's newer stuff. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, and he also said that um, he felt the proudest moment a monomath had had was playing at uh, Valken in 2006. Has that changed with this year's appearance, or do you have <laughs> have any uh, any other shows or anything that I mean, sticks out? There's there's uh, quite a few shows that kind of sticks out. I mean, uh, Valken 2006 was really good. Uh, Valken this year was also amazing. I mean, it was 80,000 people in the audience. And How did you fit the boat on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, I mean, it's it's um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, Summer Breeze this year was also fantastic. Summer Breeze two years ago was fantastic, and uh, 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 Grass Pop Metal Meeting two years ago so was also a great show. So there's so many shows; it's hard to say. Also, opening up for Slayer, of course, is. is uh, Mm -hmm. It's a real big thing for us, so that was really cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I've got a, another friend that actually just came back from Sweden today. Yeah. Um, are there any uh, any places in Sweden that aren't really well known that that you really would recommend people to go and see if they're visiting Sweden? Like the entire country. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what you're interested in, of course. Um, I mean, uh, there are some some uh, really cool cool stuff. Uh, but I don't know. I rarely do touristy stuff in my own country. So. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, in, in the, not too far from Malmo, there's a, like an actual Viking village. They sort of rebuilt it oh, cool. uh, with traditional methods mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So, which is pretty cool. Um, it's called called Fute uh, It's a very very nice place. Um, but you know. As I said, it depends on what your interest is. My my personal favorite place in Sweden is the Stockholm Archipelago, which is just phenomenal. It's uh, during summertime. It's it's really really cool place to be. Mm -hmm.